Hey guys, so today I will be talking about the UK mobile provider Voxy after using their service for a couple of months. So let's get into it. Network coverage on Voxy is fairly good, with it using Vodafone for coverage. However, Vodafone has less coverage than the likes of EE and O2. The 4G coverage of Vodafone is better than Freeze, however. But when you step it up to 5G, free outcompetes Vodafone. Of course, all of this is subject to change as the different networks improve throughout time, but this is the current overview. Voxy's pricing is actually quite competitive with other pay-as-you-go providers and one-month rolling providers, with the cheapest plan starting at £10 per month. All plans on Voxy have unlimited calls and texts to people in the UK, but when it comes to the amount of data, it does depend on your plan. So for £10 per month, you get 15 gigabytes of data with unlimited use of social media apps, and that is called endless social media in their marketing. And I will be talking about that later. For £12 per month, however, you get 20 gigabytes of data and the same endless social media. However, when you step up to £15 a month, you get endless video and 30 gigabytes of data. And when you step it up even further to £20 per month, you get the same benefits but 100 gigabytes of data. And with the most expensive plan, at £35 uh, per month, you get un endless data. So from these prices, you can start to see why some people find Voxy so attractive, because these are some quite competitive prices. So when it comes to benefits, one benefit all Voxy plans have is endless social media. So endless social media means that you can have unlimited use of certain social media apps without using any of your data. However, there are some drawbacks to this benefit. One of these drawbacks is that only certain apps can take advantage of this endless social media, such as Facebook, WhatsApp, Instagram, Facebook Messenger, Snapchat, Twitter and Pinterest. That list doesn't include some of the less mainstream social media platforms like Mastodon, Pixelfed, Parler and Gab. The second drawback is that endless social media only works in the UK, so if you're roaming, you won't be able to use this benefit. Also, to have endless social media, you've got to have some general data left, meaning if you have zero gigabytes of data left in your allowance, then you're straight out of luck. But apart from endless social media, plans starting at £12 per month have endless video, which allows you to stream video on certain apps. And the apps that can take advantage of endless video are TikTok, YouTube, Prime Video and Netflix. All plans have Wi-Fi calling, visual voicemail, 5G and EU roaming. EU roaming allows you to use your plan in EU countries, but with a 20 gigabyte fair use policy. Also, Voxy plans are all non-contract, meaning that you can cancel at any time. So moving on from the benefits of Voxy, let's discuss how easy it is to join Voxy and to leave it. So, because of the UK's PAC system, it is easy to switch mobile providers without needing to call up your old mobile provider for PAC code. These days, you can just send a text which says PAC to 65075 and you can get your PAC code, which you can then register with your new mobile network. Overall, when I went through this process, to move to Voxy from EE and to move from Voxy to GIFGAF, there were no significant problems. However, when I was leaving Voxy, it did take a little bit longer than usual to transfer my number over, but I'm not sure if that's Voxy's or GIFGAF's fault. When it comes to customer service, Voxy only gives you the option of online web chat. 
This is much more limited than the support services that uh, mainstream carriers such as EE, O2, Free and Vodafone offer. However, it makes sense for a mobile provider which is as budget conscious and online focused as Voxy. Sadly, I cannot show Voxy support because I've already switched over to GifGaf at the time of recording, but when I did have to use their support services, they were pretty easy to use. However, it was hard to get through to a real person because it kept on trying to make me use self-help resources in instead of transferring me to a real human. I found that aspect of their support quite annoying because it seemed like they were just trying to save on the amount of staff they needed to employ uh, for support instead of giving a more premium support service. But overall, this isn't too bad, and many people prefer this to being stuck on hold forever, or being stuck talking to a robot. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed today's video, like, subscribe, and share. Check me out on LBRY, and goodbye.